So let's welcome uh, Yong Chiang Xiong, the host of panel discussion, to, to start our panel discussion session. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Jishu. Uh, now, uh, this is the final session of this workshop and maybe the most interactive one for all the audience. So before we start the discussion, I'll first introduce the panelists. So yeah, here you can see in these slides, I place them in the left and the right group, indicating their different research interests and areas. So on the left, we have Lili, Mo, and Chen Ren, so who are mainly working on the wireless and the IoT domain, or uh, Sigmova and Sigbad uh, society. So uh, for Lili, we don't need extra introduction, so, but to add one more thing for Lily is that she is now creating a new wireless sensing group in MSA uh, Shanghai Lab. So any research collaborations and interns are highly welcome there. Mo and Chen Ren are both distinguished researchers and our old friends. So Mo is the professor and assistant chair in the School of CSE NTU Singapore. And Mo is the IEEE fellow for his re research uh, in wireless sensing, networking, IoT for smart cities and urban informatics. Uh, Chen Ren is uh, an endowed Boya Young Fellow Associate Professor with early tenure and Deputy Director of uh, the uh, Institute of Energy and Energy Efficient, uh, of Networking and Energy Efficient Computing, uh, Peking University. So Chen Ren is the General S Secretary of ACM SIGBAD China, Executive Committee of ACM SIGBAD and SIGMOBILE. So on the right, we have two uh, Professor Tians and this workshop host, Zhi Xiong. Uh, uh, they are all active members of uh, Open Net Lab community and SIGMOBILE, uh, SIGCOM society. So Zhi Xiong is a senior researcher working on the networking and transportation for the cloud and the AI infrastructure. Professor Ye Tian is from uh, USTC and uh, mainly work um, works on the uh, SDN internet measurement program network as well as content and multimedia networks. So those are basically the core of the internet and data center networking. Professor uh, Chen uh, Tian Chen is from Nanjing University, and he is one of the China professors with most number of SICOM papers. So if my memory is correct, probably the professor with the China professor with most numbers. So we can see the diversity and synergy among the panelists. So we expect a more wonderful. Oh, who was? Sorry. A more wonderful panel discussion ahead. I'll first raise several naive questions, which in Chinese we call it "pao zhuan yin yu," so attract jade with bricks. Uh, for example, uh, so. Uh, the audience, all the audience can raise your hand and I will pick the, 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 the questions one by one through the uh, participants. So uh, during the, the panelists share their opinions of those uh, bricks. So please uh, raise your hand in the, in, the, in the chat box so that we can uh, pick, uh, pick up the, the questions one by one. Uh, for example, we are now in 5G era, but there's still some concerns about the usefulness of the 5, 5G comparing to 4G. So for example, whether or not the 5G adds very critical and uh, unique value, or whether or not we have already fully utilized existing 40 gigabit, 40 gig, gigabit per second, 100 gigabit per second network in the cloud before we, uh, new, uh, we researchers are now looking to even further, for example, uh, 6G mobile network, Wi-Fi 7, and 400 gigabit per second, or even 8, 100 uh, gigabit per second extreme high speed data work, uh, data center networks. So people may ask, uh, what is the uh, killer app for those next generation uh, and networks? So uh, what is the driving and enabling technique and what is the uh, software and uh, uh, new hardware requirements for those uh, next generation networks? So uh, that's all for my uh, naive questions. I'll invite our panelists uh, to share their opinions or one or two due, due to time limitations. So we, we, we will not uh, uh, answer those questions one by one. We just share uh, your opinions uh, on one or two questions. So we'll start from uh, the, the previous slides from the left and uh, to the right. So uh, Lily, could you please share your opinion? Yeah, on one or two uh, questions uh, in, this, uh, in these slides. Yeah, thank you so much, Yongqiang, for the inspiring questions. Um, 
um, regarding the new opportunities for 5G and uh, 6G um, it, it, and the new application, um, personally, I think uh, it could be chicken and egg problem. We need a um, great network in order to embrace uh, new application, but current uh, 5G uh, still falls short uh, in fulfilling the user's expectation in both reliability and also bandwidth uh, um, and, and, and the latency. So, so as a networking researcher, uh, I, I think uh, there's still a, a lot needs to be done um, so that uh, we can better support uh, application developer to create uh, um, be better application to take advantage of low latency and uh, high bandwidth uh, um, new, um, 5G networks and beyond. Uh, um, specifically, um, there are a few challenges uh, in, in 5G and beyond. Uh, first of all, as we are climbing frequency ladder, the range becomes much more limited. Uh, so we need a uh, um, massive MIMO or matter surface in order to support uh, such a large range. And one of the challenges in supporting massive MIMO is the channel estimation. I hope uh, some of our work um, might be helpful in um, bringing down the cost of the channel estimation in uh, in 5G network and beyond. Secondly, uh, uh, this network uh, has a uh, uh, huge bandwidth, um, but on the other hand, uh, uh, the signal processing speed uh, uh, still is fairly limited uh, and they cause significant uh, energy consumption. Um, it doesn't take too long before this uh, um, uh, 60 gig card or even uh, other lower frequency card becomes uh, um, heated uh, um, after um, doing some, um, um, yeah, after running a f uh, some traffic uh, across it. So, so we do need a better hardware and uh, software co-designs uh, so that we can support uh, high speed uh, processing. Um, and some of these processing may, may be um, um, using uh, the signal processing, or we can also benefit from ML um, advances uh, recently. Um, uh, and also for the mo mobility, I, I still think uh, we need a better support for mobility. Uh, this is uh, 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 due to uh, there are more users uh, using this network in different scenarios, uh, in, in high speed rail and uh, um, and also uh, in uh, on the plane and uh, and also Leo satellites. Their moving speed is even faster. So um, again, um, I, I, I think we need uh, um, both software and hardware co-design to, to, to support uh, this uh, high mobility scenario. Um, and uh, uh, some of the signal processing uh, developed by um, uh, some, uh, our group and, and as well as the other groups, uh, I, I think will, 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 will be um, used for initial steps, but a lot needs to be done. Um, and uh, we do need to um, leverage lots of advances from the machine learning community to, uh, to see uh, how to better uh, leverage the synergy between these two community to advance the wireless system overall. <coughs> Thank you very much. Mo, it's your turn to share your uh, opinion. Right. Right. Thank you. Uh, talking about the scenarios and new applications, the, the, the first thing coming to my mind would be those applications of high throughput requirement, also high mobility requirement, like the VR, AR applications. I think that's a driving. Uh, motivation of having next generation mobile wireless networks. Um, but uh, today I also want to emphasize a scenario of Internet of Things, okay, IoT, which um, I believe personally, I believe would take the majority of the traffic in the future um, Internet, um, mm -hmm. considering the the uh, use of massive sensors, instrumenting our environment, uh, providing this data, uh, connecting physical world and the, and the cyberspace. And that can enable a lot of applications, um, including AI, machine learning, and autonomous vehicles, etc. Um, and I think that also links to the second question, 
uh, for such a scenario, right, I think the major challenge would be this extremely high uh, scalability requirement. Right? We are talking about, according to the estimation of the business adopters in this area, right, uh, 100 billion or even more devices versus um, current internet users, I think it's roughly at around 10 billion um, users. So it's like 10 times or even uh, more um, devices interconnected. And, and that, I think, pose a strong requirement on the on our efficiency in sharing resources, right? the network bandwidth, um, wireless spectrum, because most of those devices will be wireless, essentially, uh, the power allocation, etc. And actually, if, if you look at the history right, of uh, internet development uh, in the past 40 years, I would say, um, what sits in the core of this technology trend would be sharing resource. Right? Essentially, we have this infrastructure that carries different, a variety of different data traffic for different pairs of origin and destinations. So they are essentially sharing the same infrastructure and we have different ISPs that are working together, sharing their own uh, resources to help each other to, to, to have this uh, federated uh, networking um, uh, 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 mechanism. And, and I think for IoT, it would be similarly about resource sharing, but at a much uh, larger scale and a different level because we have more dimensions of resources to share. I think that's one particular challenge. Um, I think another one would be this super high heterogeneity, which is maybe again different from what's in today's internet, right? We have so many different devices of different computation capability and different types of data traffic and different QoS requirements for different applications. And even the wireless radio access mode could be different, right? We have Wi Fi, 5G, uh, low power wide area networks. So Although the uh, network slicing this concept at the core network may help to sort of virtualize our resources and, and uh, in the runtime allocate them for different uh, types of uh, applications, still I see a strong challenge on the radio access layer where, right, for example, we have this unlicensed spe spectrum which is shared by different technologies. Okay, yeah. And then how do they incorporate with each other? And also networks of different ownerships and the uncoordinated frequency hoppings, et cetera. So how, how do we wisely um, coordinate such a heterogeneity, I, I think would be a major challenge as well. Yeah, great, great. Thanks, uh, more for your wonderful uh, accurate inputs. So uh, the, the last one from the left group would uh, 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 is Chen because that, that would be very tough for Chen because Lili and more pretty much actually cover very comprehensively about all the all, 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 all We've the done the cherry so, picking. <laughs> <laughs> so we like to see how uh, what, what the angle of uh, terrain will 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 take and will will share uh, to to the other uh, all the audience. Thank yeah, you, sure. Uh, thanks. Anyway, thanks, uh, Yong Chang and Lily for the uh, invitation. Um, I think these are very uh, interesting and exciting uh, questions. Uh, I will try my best. Uh, I actually, uh, indeed, I, I pretty much agree with uh, Lily and more. Um, I think for 6G, uh, let's start with the first question. I think the, uh, both uh, 6G and Wi-Fi 7 are futuristic technology to us because we have not actually seen them yet. Right, uh, 6G is more uh, morphous. Uh, the goal of uh, 6G is to provide ubiquitous uh, connectivity, but uh, to my best knowledge, there's no uh, standard yet. So I think uh, this is a huge playground and more uh, exciting uh, space for academic uh, academic person. Basically, we just we, we have the opportunity to pack up everything we have not seen in the product level, or even we by ourselves want to uh, turn our technology. Uh, from uh, lab to product, we can turn that into uh, potentially into reality to the next generation of uh, standard uh, wireless communication. And we have seen, um, uh, including uh, most of the uh, many work uh, proposed in academia today, like terahertz, uh, RIS, and backscatter, uh, they all come from the perspective of or, uh, exploring new and wider spectrum, um, turning transmission medium from passive to uh, active and uh, nearly battery free sensing and uh, networking. Uh, for Wi-Fi 6, uh, to me, I did a little bit homework to see what it is. Uh, it's more concrete. Uh, 
the, the standard name uh, is AO211BE. Um, <clears throat> by uh, actually in this year, uh, in February, uh, Qualcomm already uh, released their first uh, globally uh, first Wi-Fi 7 chip. Uh, it's called Fast Connect uh, uh, 7800. And um, by the end of 2024, uh, it will be uh, the finish of its uh, version two. And um, because of different, uh, uh, because it upgrades uh, the spectrum uh, width and uh, it increased the uh, modulation scheme from 1K to 4K, uh, from 10 gigbps to eventually to uh, 30 uh, gigbps. So that's the uh, foundation. So I just uh, kind of revisit uh, the some of the fundamental properties of these two technology. And I think um, they all share the same goal, right? Always every generation uh, upgradation, uh, up upgrades will bring higher throughput and uh, uh, hopefully uh, lower latency and more massive uh, connectivity. Uh, for 5G, uh, the killer app they claim, uh, which I think we people really need is uh, remote surgery because the remote surgery really needs uh, very precise uh, and uh, well controlled uh, latency and uh, high quality of uh, imaging. But uh, and it, this case is more uh, to be. Uh, I'm not sure if it's bluffing, but actually we have not seen uh, this scenario too often. And um, for 6G to take up one step further, I think the uh, app killer application I'm really uh, I truly want to see is the holographic uh, teleportion. Um, it's like uh, we we can see a virtual person, but it lo uh, it looks so real. It, uh, he can um, it sits just in front of us. Um, I, I I think uh, I'm very uh, excited to and really want to see uh, this happen uh, because uh, the truly massive. Um, property of this application can um, uh, connect we uh, connect us with uh, someone we for example uh, our in intimate relative who already uh, passed away or some uh, legend uh, who can uh, inspire us uh, in many different ways which cannot be realized uh, by today's technology so this is the killer app uh, i want to uh, re i really want to see uh, for for the uh, maybe uh, can uh, can be uh, function uh, can be uh, realized by the next generation of the uh, wireless technology, and I will very uh, briefly talk about the challenge and the uh, the uh, hardware and the software requirements. I think for the uh, challenge, for example, for uh, Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi seven, uh, I, because we have not seen six G yet. I, I think uh, academic uh, academic person will. Uh, uh, have many uh, great thoughts in that, but just uh, take Wi-Fi 7 as an uh, example. Um, we have seen many uh, uh, efforts from the coordination perspective. For example, distributed uh, MIMO, uh, coordinated uh, OFDMA, uh, coordinated spatial reuse, reuse coordinated beamforming. Uh, I did this uh, homework, uh, but uh, the coordination actually will bring a lot of uh, challenge, especially in the uh, spectrum interference um, management uh, from both inter-technology and the intra-technology uh, perspective. Also, uh, you, you sort of compete uh, with uh, 5G or 6G in the same uh, spectrum. So uh, there's another challenge or um, coordination uh, uh, point uh, between the centralized uh, management scheme and the decentralized managed scheme. So this, to me, this is also uh, a big challenge. And lastly, for the uh, new software and hardware uh, requirements, I think uh, based on uh, my personal uh, research experience, uh, just like more uh, mentioned, uh, heterogeneity is really a new thing uh, because that really uh, bridge uh, E person and CS person, uh, especially from the ACM perspective. Um, we. Uh, we are networking person, but uh, we also need to uh, closely collaborate with uh, the people uh, from computer uh, and computing um, community. Uh, for example, we never thought about uh, today or in the future, we might need to use leverage uh, GPU uh, to leverage its um, intrinsic property of parallelism uh, processing uh, to 
handle the massive MIMO and uh, uh, ultra wide uh, bandwidth uh, real time demodulation uh, in uh, IFID or uh, VRAM, these uh, cases. Okay, that's my two cents. Yeah, before we go to, uh, thank you very much, uh, Terran, for a wonderful and very unique angle and even cross discipline. So actually, you, you also cover some of the scenarios, also cover the, the internet the, or the backbone of the, the, the network. Before we go to the, the uh, right group of the panelists, so we'd like to uh, take some of the uh, questions from uh, the audience. So, uh, uh, Jiang, uh, would you please unmute yourself and uh, yeah. Uh, uh, tell us your name, uh, affiliation, and uh, to which member you want to ask uh, the deliver the qu question to. So okay. please go ahead. Okay, so I'm Jiu Mingjiang, and I'm from Networking Research Group in MSR Asia, and I'm an intern. So my problem may not be a little bit uh, naive, but sorry to spend your precious time answering my question. So I, I want to ask um, Professor Mo Li, and uh, since you know, since 5G operators in the communications industry will achieve much less results in the market than 5 than 4G, because the speed and latency of 4G basically meets the usage scenarios of you know you know uh, market users. And recently, the application of 5G is mainly no non-personal applications such as televisioning and the re remote surgery and so on. And uh, but the construction Construction of 5G has a you know a higher cost, and many places ha have not popularized. Therefore, from from the perspective of, of market reflection, the construction and the popularization of communication infrastructure may be a challenge. So, therefore, I have the question: Is that uh, will the en enablement of 6G networks be more difficult than enabling 5G? <laughs> Uh, considering the speed of technology popularization <coughs> and the corresponding cost, so yeah, so that's my new question. So, could you please answer that? Yeah. Right. So this question to me, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, so, so first, I mean, I have to confess, right? I don't really have a very concrete uh, uh, sub image in my mind. What what would six G be in the future, right? Let, let's briefly look back at the different generations of the of the mobile networks right? from from the first generation which enables the wireless uh, sort of communication for voice transmission and then when we move to second generation what's a key differentiator would be we are moving from the uh, uh, into the digital sort of uh, uh, modulation uh, from analog to digital that makes a uh, generation and then into the 3g what's a key difference would be we are not only supporting voices, we are really supporting general data traffic. So we are, we are looking at voices plus general data traffic. And when we move into 4G, what's a key differentiator? That's we are now make the core network in general as an IP network. So essentially everything running in the core network is based on IP switching, which is very much similar to what's internet doing. I think those makes a key differentiation. And, and then let's talk about 5G. It's not only about faster, it's not only about high mobility, but it's, to me, it's, it's really about what's a differentiator. I think that's the high heterogeneity of the different applications 5G can support. In 5G's blueprint, it will support general high throughput applications with faster um, and then higher throughput. At the same time, it is supposed to also support other uh, diverse applications, including IoT, where we have intermittent traffic, which may not be high throughput, but at a large scale. And another sector is very low latency applications like the uh, autonomous vehicles or V2V communications. So I think those constitute the key differentiator where 5G is very vibrant and supporting various applications. Right. And then if you're talking about 6G, then I think what, what's key to me would be, okay, what makes it so different? We are going to call it a new generation, right? I, I think that's a question that we want to bear in our mind. And then after that, then we can say, okay, whether the it is worthwhile to put in so much effort time into 
this uh, new generation of uh, wireless mobile network. So, so to me, uh, even the 5G is, the power of 5G is not fully unleashed at this moment. We see high throughput applications already supported, but uh, uh, to be very uh, frank, I haven't seen so much IoT applications supported in, in wide uh, sort of uh, spec, uh, range. I haven't seen V2V uh, traffics really dominating or taking a large share of the traffic supported by 5G. And I think um, that will be the day when we see those applications supported in general in 5G, that would be the day for us to add a bet better positions to, to, to envision the future generation of networks. And that's just my personal <laughs> take. If I may, I would like to add something onto it. Uh, yeah, thanks um, all for excellent uh, um, sharing. And uh, so 5G consists of two parts, uh, uh, to my understanding. One is the, the, the upper stack, and the other is the physical layer. From the physical layer, the millimeter wave, because of more limited range, so the deployment does take more effort because we need a lot more base station in order to cover the same area, and that uh, just uh, take time. And then the other components uh, uh, is uh, like a network slicing and uh, also on uh, the management uh, that part uh, uh, has been rolled out much quicker and we are likely to see similar trend in 6G. Um, in 6G, um, part of it uh, also the, the 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 physical layer going to terahertz. The the range is even more limited. So we need uh, even more base station to cover the area. The rollout of terahertz base station is likely to take uh, years. Um, but, but, but other components like uh, slicing and uh, um, uh, a better uh, support for for um, for IoT devices and the joint design of um, um, the the, um, the hardware and software. Those parts uh, we are likely to see a faster um, um, uh, deployment. And uh, uh, so, so, so depending on how we define 5G and 6G, we do see some benefit in parts of this. Uh, but in order to fully see um, the complete rollout uh, of the base station, 5G base station or 6G base station to cover everywhere, um, this will likely to take much longer. But, but hopefully in some um, major area um, and, and regions, uh, we are going to see on uh, the deployment and people living in this area will benefit sooner. And uh, um, on top of it, uh, the, uh, the low orbit satellite, uh, which will be part of both the 5G and 6G, um, will also uh, expand the, um, the wireless uh, um, coverage to, to, to benefit more people and you know, remove digital divide. And hopefully um, uh, more people will benefit from, the, from these type of advances, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, let me follow up uh, what Lily has introduced. This is very, very, very um, um, and inspiring. And I think um, forget about the name. It's five uh, G or six G. I would, I would rather call all of those something that we are looking for uh, for our next generation networks. Yes. Yes. Uh, even five G, I think, is not still fully unleashed at this moment. Yes. And then so much uh, uh, future features that we'd like to see for next generation network, especially like Lily mentioned this uh, low orbit satellite communication, I would say it uh, at the major game changer for future wireless mobile networking. And I see all those as a wish on the wish list for next generation uh, networks. Great, great. Uh, actually, due to time limitation, we, 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 we have to stop this uh, question here. And let's uh, start the, uh, the uh, sharing uh, for the uh, right group, so we start from uh, uh, Professor uh, Tianye. So uh, Tianye, could you please tell, uh, turn your camera and share some of your opinions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, see, I, I see that. Yeah. Please go uh, ahead. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, um, actually, um, as I see, five uh, G or six G and Wi Fi six or Wi Fi seven. Um, all focus on <coughs> communication, so <coughs> they provide larger bandwidth and maybe lower latency. 
Um, but um, in future, we want network to perform some computation. So uh, we, we like uh, in-network computation. And uh, for this communication and technologies, they cannot, um, do not want to do some communication and complicate computation uh, in, in in their tech, in in their <clears throat> in their plan um, in, in their plan. So um, I think uh, maybe um, maybe I, I I don't I don't think. Oh oh. Yeah. Uh, do I do I suppose to answer answer these three questions? It's up to you. So I I think you can you can yeah take take some of the previous for the next generation, for example, internet, or even for the next generation of the uh, research or e evaluation platform for for, for, oh. for, for, for networking research. So you, 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 I, I think it's up to you. Yeah, so I, okay. I think your, your experience would be more um, uh, beneficial for, for, for the second uh, sharing. So people may learn a lot about your uh, experience of okay. running and executing and do some research for the uh, uh, computer network research and ed education, uh, as well as the evaluation platform based on the ON or other uh, platforms. So we, we can see that Google uh, just uh, take over the pre uh, previous uh, plan lab, uh, uh, plan lab uh, platform so that they can uh, enable more uh, exciting uh, research and evaluation platform. And we'd like to uh, uh, get your opinion and your sharing about the, the next generation a uh, research platform or education platform. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so about the the research platform. So the most important thing is to have a uh, um a platform such as uh, Planning Lab. Um, so people want to want to join this plat uh, this, this platform and uh, and carry out experiments. And Planning Lab is uh, very successful, but uh, it actually um, dies. Um, so. So I think the most important thing is to encourage people to join this platform and uh, to make that platform have enough resources and um, manpower to maintain this platform. And this is the hardest thing to, to do. We, we have developed a, a platform in China uh, collecting um, over, uh, over, over 10 cities, uh, collecting many and universities and institutes and we have leased uh, the, the fiber to connect uh, our nodes and uh, on this platform we can program the the, the, the switch to to do something uh, to do many things but actually there are very few users to to join us and they don't want to use this platform and they think it's troublesome to use this platform uh, so after <laughs> this project um, successfully uh, finish it. We we do not support this platform and stop to lease these fiber links because it's very expensive. So I think the most important is that people have no incentive to use the use the search platform to to carry out their, their job. Their job. They think uh, maybe simulation is enough. And uh, for the uh, for the second question, the the reproducibility of the network research. Uh, actually, um, so 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 uh, if we want to reproduce the results of some people, some other people's work, there are many efforts, and uh, uh, many times uh, people want to do not want to pay for such. Um, to, to pay for such efforts. And uh, uh, sharing code may be the, 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 the most important thing in the reproducibility. And, uh, uh, but I think it's not enough because um, some research platforms such as, for, for example, some certain type of uh, native PGA or, or programmable switch, they are not available to everybody. So actually, um, I think it's very hard to Make the, the networking research results uh, reproducible. Uh, this is not like the, the the AI or like machine learning because there are many um, software. Uh, in networking, we are involved with hardwares, and hardwares are not available for everywhere for for everybody. Uh, actually, I, I have some difficulty in buying uh, some. For example, the newest um, uh, um, 
in China because there are no uh, no, no channels to, to buy such things. Uh, so uh, that's my my experience. Some sometimes maybe a bad experience with the platform. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Chen. Well, what's your yeah sharing and opinion? Some of the comments about the especially for the uh, re. Uh, producibility. So I think for other system areas, so we can see more and more efforts are actually are paid to improve the uh, uh, to to help people to reproduce the the uh, research. So I agree with uh, uh, Professor Tanya that uh, for for networking research, it's a bit harder, but we like to improve the 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 capability of reproduce other others research. So one of the uh, key uh, um, improvements is that we can. Uh, 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 provide the common evaluation platform, for example, ON or other uh, plan lab or other uh, ME lab. That, that is one key component to produce the re uh, 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 research in addition to the, the, the uh, uh, open source, uh, 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 source code uh, uh, sharing. So I, I like to uh, get your opinion. So uh, Chen, about uh, the, the, uh, the evaluation, the education and the uh, repro uh, reproducibility of the Nokia research, as well as some of the uh, new uh, research area for the for the next generation internet or data center networking. So it is up to you to just to share okay what okay. Um, actually, uh, this is the same uh, for me. Uh, when I educate, not not the undergraduates, but the grad my graduates, my master students and PhD students. When I uh, when I um, uh, introduce them into my research area. I mostly ask them to reproduce the uh, existing networking research from CECOM, uh, NSDI or something. But uh, 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 yeah, the reproducibility of many works are not not as good. You know, uh, when we reproduce something, we find uh, we mm, seldom there are there are there are some paper uh, some papers they can end up have what the they are uh, uh, claimed performance. Mostly there are some some, some hidden traps. Uh, some hidden details, so you you cannot uh, uh, reproduce it. So uh, so um, recent years uh, we have a uh, train and in top conference like uh, I think um, Botcom, Cicom, and SDI, not always encourage those those badge, right? Those badge uh, for you so to 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 demonstrate and they have they have source code available and you can reproduce it. So recently we we mostly you know when we cite papers we we. Re Refer to papers. We will mostly tend to use this kind of papers because mostly they are more credible. For those papers, for many papers, when 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 they do not share their even their simulation simulation code, and mostly uh, they 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 problem have. Okay, they mostly have problems. That's uh, uh, not you. Uh, it's uh, the the authors do not uh, uh, want you to reproduce them. Uh, uh, this is our experience because uh, when we, uh, for some very famous paper, we will reproduce it. We found problems. And we we ask the authors. We communicate after several rounds of communication. When you came into the some corner, some corner case, some very critical uh, re uh, uh, region, they stop to respond to you because you found something. Uh, that's that's my, our experience. So so the reproducibility, the problem is that I think one. Uh, one thing is that uh, the, the current trend needed to continue, or the community needed to encourage our author to submit their uh, at least uh, simulation co simulation code faster than their, their uh, system code to contribute to the uh, community so we can reproduce and reevaluate the credibility of this work. Uh, the second is that uh, we need a, a common platform, for example, for those uh, AI for networking, congestion control, or or, or other uh, wireless, uh, uh, wireless line research, uh, probably we can reproduce them in our open data lab uh, platform and uh, open source to the public. That will make your job uh, more credible. So uh, at least from our group, we currently, um, uh, every paper accepted, we, we just uh, at least publish our uh, simulation code NS3 uh, to open to the public. So so they can, they can you know, reproduce and they can they can, they can confirm that we are doing a solid work and real work. And so we can only ask ourselves. Uh, this is my comment about the reproducibility and credibility of our networking research. 
uh, another one for the next generation internet. Actually, I have a I'm, I'm not a wireless guy, but uh, we have saw a, a lot of a lot of researchers uh, like Lily Moore and Chen Yong here. I, I actually have one question for you. you because uh, I'm, I'm, I like to play games, especially VR games. Currently, uh, when we use the VR helmet, ham, uh, ham in my hand, and I play these games, so very happy. But one question: for these new technologies, 6G or or 6G or Wi-Fi 7, uh, because I have looking into the protocol details, uh, protocol details, uh, there are many uh, features. Uh, in this wireless design, not to want to save the energy uh, uh, because uh, you can uh, aggregate the data uh, together uh, and a batch, send them a batch so you can save the energy, right? But uh, uh, this is conflicting with some uh, killer apps you just claimed. For example, the interac interactive games, interactive VR. VR. So how, um, how do you guys uh, want to solve this problem, the conflict between uh, energy saving and uh, the, 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 the interactivity in, to, in the protocol level. As I know this is a special, uh, a special area for, for, for Lili, for various protocols, right? As well as for Terran, because Terran is the duplicate yeah, of the yeah. internet <laughs> networking and energy computing. So we, we like to hear Yeah, because uh, this really from... <laughs> affects my, my experience of playing games. So <laughs> I want uh, I want various researchers. Do you want to solve this problem or it's not? It's not solvable. We cannot solve this because I, I know it's important to save energy. Otherwise, our helmet will go die uh, in one hour. But uh, do you have a chance to solve this? I mean, let me play game for like four hours. So, so Tanya and Lily. So yeah. So there, there was a, a strong demand for your research. <laughs> so Lily, you you make sure your comment. Yeah, your opinion about this yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, thank you for, for excellent questions. Uh, um, there are multiple ways of reducing energy. Um, uh, sending data in batch is one way, but if for, for your interactive for traffic, uh, we can use uh, other ways of saving energy. So for example, energy aware um, modulation, uh, and also uh, we can uh, do, uh, doing um, video rate, uh, bit rate adaptation that uh, try to conserve your energy. In fact, uh, that might be an interesting new topic. Uh, existing uh, ABR algorithms uh, uh, don't consider energy saving. They, they just um, trying to maximize uh, the utilization of the network bandwidth. Uh, but if energy uh, is uh, an important criteria, um, then that might introduce a new research problem for uh, video rate adaptation. And at the receiver side, uh, you can we can also do some reconstruction um, and um, uh, some energy aware machine learning model to reconstruct a video so that you don't have to send uh, so much, uh, but still able to uh, achieve good video quality. All these are excellent research topic. Thank you for your inspiration. Uh, yeah, my two cents is uh, I'm actually more negative about this. Uh, 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 we have seen um, actually since the invention the, of the smartphone uh, in SIG Mobile sponsor conference, we have seen a lot of work on energy saving um, on mobile phones, mobile device in general. Um, <clears throat> from the system design perspective, uh, networking uh, protocol design, uh, we, we for each paper we we can see some uh, like 10%, 20% energy saving. And uh, if we put everything together, they, some of them may be uh, conflict with each other. Uh, I don't know the overall uh, expected or anticipated <laughs> aggregated uh, performance, uh, the energy saving um, uh, overall performance. But today I think the power bank is the ultimate solution for, for people to use. <laughs> So I mean, okay. I mean uh, t t ten, uh, 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 Professor Tianchen, uh, yeah, you ask a very challenging question. Uh, if we <laughs> want to have the high quality video uh, gaming uh, experience, then uh, energy uh, efficiency is something we have to um, sacrifice. Okay. Okay, and now it's Chen uh, for the, for the last uh, member of the right group. 
So actually, as more and also to mention, actually, heterogeneities is very uh, uh, key components for the next generation uh, network. So for the OL, so especially for the uh, evaluation platform, so uh, Chen also mentioned, uh, uh, he he will uh, encourage or uh, research work uh, at least from his group would be uh, evaluated in the in the common uh, platform such as a simulator. Uh, S2 or uh, S3 or even for the uh, uh, open net lab. So I, I I'd like to get the 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 comments or opinions from uh, Zhishu about the uh, next step next step of the uh, open net lab. So to uh, on the heterogeneity of the network. So uh, uh, Lily also mentioned the there there's also trend for the uh, low orbit uh, satellite communications. So for the uh, 5G, for the uh, for the 6G, for the next generation of uh, Wi-Fi. So currently you ha you have already have uh, several uh, existing uh, networks such, such as uh, 4G, 5G, or uh, 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 existing Wi-Fi, uh, wi uh, 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 Wi-Fi six. So, is there any um, uh, uh, plan uh, for the for the uh, to improve the heterogeneity of the uh, open net lab and how we can uh, provide a common evaluation platform so that people can reproduce the uh, Nokia research work uh, regardless of the wireless or wide uh, uh, Nokia research on the uh, on this common uh, platform? Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, I think. Uh, the first one, the heterogeneity of, of Open Lab. I think yes. I think this th we have a plan to achieve this. Maybe we can discuss with Lydia and the professors uh, later. Because uh, I think uh, we already have 5G and uh, some Wi-Fi network in the Open Lab. But uh, you know, to 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 I think Open Lab should uh, cover more satellites or some new technologies for the students and the professor to do. Uh, to do a kind of community maintained a network for the for the students and professors don't have a chance to build this infrastructure to you know to make the community and make the uh, framework more uh, usable for for all of the researchers. Yeah, this is very important for I think for for this. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, let me answer the question one by one. Uh, the first one that is the can data centric networking research could be applied to the new networks. So I think uh, the answer would be yes, because this is one of the goal we built uh, uh, Open Lab and uh, also Microsoft or a lot of big companies to achieve this. Uh, previously, actually, uh, when we have new networks, what we should do? That is actually we we should measurement this kind of network collect some traces and do some real experiments and then add some heuristic, heuristic or some algorithm to adapt to this kind of new network. Maybe some congestion control or some, some bandwidth estimation to achieve this. I think this is a, a very hard for a company, even for a research group to us achieve this. Because of as, as far as I know, for example, for Avabri C, there are, there are several core members to maintain this it's, it's, and uh, it's very hard to achieve this uh, given given the situation so data center data centric networks actually can can fix this by collect data more data and train some algorithm automatically in the loop and provide new models to adapt to the network to research on the dead network so this is one of the goal we we want to achieve this and the open lab actually is one of the platform we want to you know we, uh, to kind of do the research uh networking and ai together to collect data run the algorithm and build the infrastructure together to achieve this uh i i do be, i do believe this is a kind of next gen network platform the second one that is how to improve the uh, reproducibility of the networking research. I think I think more and more professors and uh, uh, researchers are aware of the importance of reproducibility. Uh, I saw many conference they recommend uh, uh, the, the submission to to provide artifacts of the of the of the of their work. I think this is a good uh, a good trend of the networking research. But for data centric networking, I think it's kind of more difficult. Firstly, actually, is there's no standard to to show how to achieve the 
the reproducibility. For example, if they only provide a model and uh, they don't open open their data set, it's very hard to, to verify because you don't know the, some details. Uh, but another thing that is, if they provide a data set, it's also hard to, to achieve the reproducibility. Uh, for example, for OpenNetLab uh, MMS challenge last year, actually we do uh, we we did a lot of experiments for each model submission. Of each one we have at least 400 uh, experiments in different in different scenario and in different network. Uh, consequently, we have terabits data collection for the networking for the for the log for the for the for the uh, for the video transmission, a uh, transmitted video and audio. The problem that, that is, if we open if we open source the data set, can we achieve the reproducibility? I think the answer would be very difficult because it's hard to 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 to, to handle such amount of data. If I if somebody put some fake data into it, I don't think it's easy to find it. So I think to make the reproducibility, I think we should have a standard and have some technology to, to achieve this. So this is one of the topic of open lab. So maybe we can uh, do some proposal and uh, maybe ask for comments from uh, our professors in the community and see, uh, can we achieve it? Or even uh, just move a little step for it to make a better reproducibility for networking search. I think the last one question that is what are the challenges and opportunities for the research platform? Uh, I think the challenges are not only for the, uh, in my mind, the challenge not only for the research platform, but also for the whole networking community. The first one that is, I'm not sure uh, other professors uh, 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 have this feeling or not. So the, 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 the first, uh, the first uh, uh, opportunity or the first uh, uh, choice of the of the students to do the research is definitely not the networking. Even the networking have uh, you know good industrialization and a good opportunity and uh, everywhere, but uh, but uh, because of the maybe because of the good industrialization, the problem is the margin value is become decrease and decrease. So I I think uh, we the first problem that is we need some young, young pioneers who choose the networking and uh, provide more scenarios for provide more algorithms for provide new new applications on the networking to let them to 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 feel like the networking. Uh, and uh, the other thing that is for the research, I think the networking research is kind of easy and hard because we are using networking every day even for the teams we are we kind of using the teams to to communication with the network I think this the core of the teams one of the core of, of teams is is networking without networking we cannot achieve everything but uh, the can control bandwidth estimation of all Kodak all of the things behind the teams is kind of very complex uh, it's hard for our Maybe third year, third year uh, undergraduate to to learn how to uh, how to how to know the core uh, algorithm, core component of teams. So this is one of the problem for research. If they have a very high high standard to 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 to, to for a student to to know the, the the happiness of the networking, so maybe they they also don't feel like it. So I think uh, our way, actually, together with Professor Tian and the pro uh, two professors Tian Tian Chen and uh, Tian Ye, actually, we are building the network education. We try to make the you know the students feel like 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 the net the, the the technology of networking. Maybe make it more more easy to implement. Maybe make it easy more to achieve. Uh, other that is. Uh, the platform of OpenLab is also to want to 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 mix the gap of the research of uh, young maybe young graduate students undergraduate students to know uh, to do some research on on it. So this is uh, yeah this is I think we 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 try to fix 
uh, this by 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 open that up, but uh, we, we can see. And the, the last thing that is uh, for the new networks, actually, I am not a, a, a expert on the new emerging networks. So in my mind, that is, uh, we have data center network and we have age network, we have internet. We, ha we, 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 we see a lot of, uh, you know, a, a different term in, in networks because of its, its own attributes. So can new networks can can you know make make it make make the boundary uh, eliminate el eliminate it uh, just like we, do, we the data center network have same bandwidth as the age network as the five G six G or then we can have more you know we have have a more general network for the community so this is a, actually a question for the professors yeah okay. thank you. So, uh, yeah, I, I think due to time limitations, we we, we already exceed our uh, initial uh, uh, schedule for around 40, uh, 40 minutes. So I think now it approaches the end of this session, uh, also the end of this workshop.